right. Now, before we get uh, to reshaping in the other direction from um, long into wide, we have to stop and get a hold of a few things first because we're going to have to use this um, in, in our uh, next reshaping step. So we need some, some tools to help us out, so to speak, and so that's what we're here to figure out here. So what we're going to do is I'll uh, look at the functions first dot, last dot, and then a statement called retain, and we're going to see how this works. So I think that what we're going to do here, let me just scroll down a little bit here, we're going to look at the retained statement first. Let's scroll down a little too far here. There we go. All righty. So what's going on here? We have a data set. We're going to call it missing. So we're going to input ID and measurement. And here you go. And so you see all these dots in here. These are missing measurement values. All righty. So let's do this off of the program. How about that? Come over here, bring up our program. Okay, here's the data set, and we'll scroll down here a little bit. And what we're going to do here after we read it in, we're going to do another data step. We're going to call this one um, X retain. We'll set it here uh, on this data set here, and then we're going to use a retain statement. And what the retain statement does is it carries the current value of a variable from one observation down to the next. So as SAS cycles through the data step, it will keep this value and bring it down from one line to the next, as opposed to setting it to, value, uh, to a missing value and then reading it in as it goes through. Okay, and so we'll see that this is um, very, very helpful. But this is kind of difficult to explain in words and really easy to see in the output. So why don't we just do it that way? Highlight this to read in the data set. Here is um, our next data step here. And this says here that if the measurement is not equal to missing, then the new measurement equals measurement. Okay, so we're creating a new variable right here in the retain and we're setting that retained value to zero. And so if measurement isn't missing, then pick up the new one. So if it's not missing here, pick up the value. Otherwise, keep the value and carry it down is basically what we're saying here. Okay. All of that, let's highlight all this, and we'll pick up this proc print to see what's going on. Click on our running person, and there you go. So this zero here, back here to the program real quick, is from this variable here, or er, this zero here. This is what initializes the variable new measure. So it starts out with a value of zero, not a value of missing. Let's look back here at our output. So the um, next value here, it was not missing, so we had the equality. Here it was missing, so the retained statement took over and carried this value down. Okay, this value here was not missing, and so the equality held. This value wasn't missing, but here these three values were missing, and so the retained statement is what's carrying this value of four down um, through these observations. So that's what the retained statement does. Okay, so let's come back here to our program. That's the way this works. And so let's um, come down here. And oh, before we do that, let's do this. Let's actually try commenting this out. So let's do this. If we comment that out, highlight this now, and run it, see what happens. This is with the uh, uh, statement in. Here it is with the statement out, and you see yeah, this equals this. Nothing happened. So that's the importance of that retained statement. Okay, let's come back here. We're going to try this again. So we're going to have this next example here. We're creating a new variable called new1. It's equal to zero from the get-go. And then we're going to have new1 equals new1 plus measurement. So we're summing things up here. 
Okay, that's what we're doing, as long as there's an actual value there to work with. Okay, so that's what that's doing. It's highlighted and click on our running person. There we go. Okay, so we start out with zero. That's what we initialized our new variable to. So here we have the two plus the zero gives us this two. Well, we have nothing to add here, so that two is just retained and carried down. Well, here we had a value of 3. Well, 3 plus our original 2 gives us this 5. We have a value here, so this value is added to our 5, and this gives us our 9. We get here, well, we don't have anything to add, so we carry that 9 down. This is the retained statement working here. The value of 9 is retained. We get this 5. Well, the 5 plus the 9 gives us the 14, and you get the point. So that's what we're doing. And so you see, this is kind of a cool way to sum down a column if you need to do something like that. And so let's come back to the program. We'll keep that little tidbit in mind. And now that we've got a handle on the retained statement, let's go look at first dot and last dot. And these are functions in SAS. And they are, how do you explain this well? They are variables that SAS always creates when you use a by statement, but you have to talk SAS into showing them to you if you want to see them. And they are dummy variables. In other words, they're coded 0, 1. And they are always 0, except for, in the case of first dot, if it is the first element of some sort of class. And for last dot, it's always zero unless it's the last element of that class. And let's stop and think about what this really means. But before we do that, we need to do this proc sort. And why do we need to do a proc sort before we do anything else? Because we have this by statement. And this by statement is what creates the first dot and last dot variables. So you see it's kind of a chain thing. You need to have this in order to have this in order to have this. So that's why we're doing this. So proc sort data equals missing, and then we're going to um, output the sorted data set into this one, OK? Here we have a data set that we're going to call example 1, ex1. Here's the set statement. Here's the by. And then by first dot id then uh, first equals one. So this is the variable that SAS is creating, and this is the variable that we're going to be seeing in our data set. So if this, then this. Now you say, if this, what? If this, you know, there's no equal sign there. There's no, nothing there to tell you if what. If it is true. That's what this syntax here means, if it is true. And in computer talk, true means 1 and false equals 0, OK? So that's why you don't have the equals 1 here. It's um, just a logical statement, and so that's all that is. So we set our variable that we're going to call first equal to 1 when this is true. Otherwise, it's going to be 0. And same thing here for last dot, then we're going to have this. Now let me scroll up here a little bit here. And you see here that this was the ID. So first dot is true on this case. Last dot is true on the, whoops, not quite because we're not sorted. And this is why the example's like this, is so that you can see why you need to sort it. So when you actually go through and do the sort, this will be the first one, and then whatever the last one, we'll get the one for the last dot. OK? So that is that. We're going to scroll back down here. Now let's just run this whole thing and have a look at the output, shall we? OK. There's that, and let's click on our submit. And there we go. So here are the variables first and last that you saw us create. So we have the data set sorted, so all the ones and the twos and the threes get all grouped together. And this is the first observation for ID 1, and so first is 1 and last is 0. This second one in here, well, it's neither the first nor the last, and that's why it's 0 for both of these variables. For this observation here, 
Well, it's not the first observation, but it is the last observation. And so that's why it's a one here. And the same logic applies all the way down. And so what you can see is this is a way of telling you when you're at the beginning and at the end of a group, in this case the group formed by this ID variable. And we need this in order to do the reshaping, that's why we're going to all this trouble here. So let's come back to our program here. And so now, scrolling down some, we're going to combine these two things that we've got going on. So we're going to combine the retain statement with our first dot function, and we're going to get a running sum and a count. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We have a new data set, we're going to call it kids, and the length of kid name is a string variable, and that's going to be a length of four. We're going to input a family ID, a kid name, the birth order, and the child's weight. So, inputting data set. So we're going to sort it by fam ID, and you'll notice that this by statement here in the proc sort is exactly the same as the by statement here in this data step, and that is necessarily true. They have to be exactly the same or it's not going to work. Okay, so if you have this sorted on um, the child's weight or something, and then you have this by with fam ID, you're going to get an error message and SAS will complain that the data aren't sorted correctly. Okay, so these two statements have to match up exactly. So we do this, we understand this. We're retaining two variables here. We're going to retain some weight and count, okay? So we're retaining these two variables. We have our by statement here, and this requires the sorting as we note here. And so we say if first dot uh, fam ID, and again this is when this is true, then do some, e some weight equals zero and count equals zero. And here's the end statement that corresponds with the do. Now you'll notice that this do loop looks a little bit different than the previous do loops. And the reason for this is the number of things that we're doing. If you're only doing one thing, then you can use the uh, syntax that we saw before, um, and it didn't have uh, this setup. But because we're doing more than one thing, we have to use this setup here, and then you can put in here as many things as you need to do, and then go ahead and end it. Okay, so what this is saying is that for the first member of the family, set the sum of the weights back to zero and the count back to zero, because obviously you don't want the sum of the weights from the kids from the last family influencing the weights of the kids for this family. That wouldn't make any sense. So after this, we come here and we actually do our sum weight. And so we say sum weight equals the sum of the weights plus the current weight. Okay, well that's how we're doing our uh, running total thing here. And then count equals count plus one. So for each child, we're adding one more. And here we're creating a variable called mean weight which is the sum of the weights divided by the count, which is, of course, why we needed these variables. Okay, let's scroll down here and see the rat last of this. Uh, if we had this uh, statement here in the program, then we would output only the last observation for each family. And we can go back and try and run it both ways, see what we think. Let's scroll up some and pick up all of this and start highlighting it. I'm just going to do this with my keyboard because I think it's a little bit easier than doing it with my mouse. It's acting a little bit funny today. All right, we've highlighted everything that we need, including a proc print, and we'll click on our running person here, and we see what we see. Okay, there we go. So we see that the family IDs are all sorted here. Okay, that's good. Here's the child's name, the child's weight, and then we have the sum of the weights. So the 60 plus the 20 gives you the 80, plus the 40 gives you the 120. But notice here that we're not adding the 80 to the 120 to get 200. This was the start back at zero when you come into a new family. This is the uh, first dot thing taking effect here, and that's why we're coming back here to 80. And then the 80 plus the 50 gives you the 130 and the count thing is working the same way, and there's our mean weights. Okay, so there's all of that. Let's come back to our program, 
and oh, we want to do this. Okay, let's take that out, and then we will just rerun this. Let's click on a running person there, and you see the difference in the output here. We only have this line right here. We only have Anne down here. We only have uh, Pam here, and we only have Stu right here. Okay. And this will be a handy little trick when we actually get around to our reshaping. So that's why we point that out here. Okay. Back to the program. And so let's see here. We're only outputting the final uh, stuff per family. And so here we go. This is um, this last dot, then output, and this is what we just did. Okay? So that's that. Go ahead and run this and see that it's the same thing. There we go. Okay, so there's that and there's that. So, just another way of doing it. Let's come back to the program. Finally, we're up to reshaping again. We've got everything in our toolbox that we need in order to get this thing to work. Let's start off with this proc print so that we can see the data set with which we are working. We do this and we say, oh, I recognize this. This is the one that we reshaped from wide to long. Well, we're going to be really creative and reshape this one back into its wide format. And you'll see the differences in the way the program has to be set up in order to go back the other way. As you can see, it's a little more involved. So let's come back to our program. And scrolling down some, we can see what all is going on here. Okay. We start off with a proc sort by family ID, and this by corresponds to this by. So we all understand that. Here's the output data set. And you don't have to output the data set um, if you don't want to create a second data set. We're just doing it for a point of clarity, but it is not necessary. And you may not want to do this if your data set is really huge and um, all these temporary data sets start eating up a lot of space on your computer and resources and stuff like that, then don't output it. Uh, you can just leave this out and then this will be the sorted data set. You can use that here. Either way. Okay, so we're creating a data set called wide underscore array one. Here's the set. Here's the by. The by is what's creating the first dot and the last dot variables that we're going to be using. Here is the retain statement, and we are going to retain uh, the variables fam inc 96 through fam inc 98. Okay, so that's what we're retaining. We have our array statement here. We called it a fam inc again, 96 to 98. Here are the elements. Okay, we're all familiar with this. Here's the if statement here. So if first dot fam ID. Remember, this means if this is true, then do. So then go do the following things. Okay, do I, 96 to 98, a fam inc I, okay, this is the subscript, equals missing. This end goes to this do, this end goes to this do. Okay, so each do has to have its own end. Okay, it's not like <coughs> one end will end everything for you. It's not going to do that. Now that we come out of it, now we actually do the assignment. Okay, and so this is where the array a fam inc with the um, subscript here of year equals um, a f um, equals fam inc. Okay, so that is an awful lot of stuff, and then we're going to drop off all this stuff here. Okay, just highlight it and run it. And we'll hit our running person, and we look at this, and we go, you know what? This just does not look like that wide data set that we started out with. And um, what is with all of these missing values? And why do we have this nice little step down thing? What's going on here? This is the effect of the retain statement. So SAS reads in FAMINC 96 first and retains the value down through 
each of the um, rows of fam ID 1 and then each of the rows of this and so forth. So that's why this is all filled in. <coughs> but on the first pass through, we don't have a value here. Remember, we set it equal to missing. And so that's why this missing is here and this missing is here. Second pass through, we pick up this value. This is the retained value that came down here. But we still don't have anything here, and so it's still set to missing. If we get down here, this has been retained all the way down. This has been retained this one time, and then we pick up this one. Now, this is where we were saying that just outputting that last one with that last dot would be a useful trick, because really, this is the only observation that you want. This is the one row for each family. And we want this one because, of course, this has got all the data in it. So that's, that's why we want that guy. And that's why we want the last dot. We want to be able to figure out when we're at the end and we've got all of our data. So let's come back to our program here. And we are going to scroll down here. And I think that the only difference between these programs is that this isn't commented out. So I think that we can highlight all this and then go ahead and click on the running person. And sure enough, so this line here is in fact this line here. And this one here is this here. And this last one here is this last one here. So that's what the story is there. So let's come back to the program. And that is... That is reshaping data from long into wide. Okay, let's scroll down here. And what are we going to go into? How about a more subtle use of arrays? Okay, an issue in SAS data management is that we cannot access multiple observations at one time. Thus, we cannot do comparisons across observations. So one solution to this problem is to transpose the data from long into wide. So what this is saying is that we can't look down a column, but we can look across columns. And then we can use the array to uh, do these comparisons. So the goal in this next example is to compare each observation with the previous observation and the next observation. And if they're the same, then we want to flag it. Okay, so this here is a real life example of when you would do some reshaping to get some information that you need. So here is the data set that we're going to use. I'm just going to run that in real quick. And we're going to scroll down here. And yep, there's the print. Let's go ahead and run that. There we go. Okay, everything came in here. So we have a variable here called topic A, and we have some values here, and then we have some, um, here's a person, and we see that our data set is sorted. Okay. Let's come back here to the program, and amazingly, here's the proc sort that's actually going to sort this. And let's see, what are we going to do here? We are going to create a variable called count, and we're going to retain it. This by here corresponds to this by statement here. So if uh, first dot person, if it's the first observation for each person, then count is going to be equal to zero. And then we're going to do count equals count plus one. So we're just breaking this up into manageable little bytes here. And that's what we're going to do here. So let's highlight this and click on the running person. Oh, then that doesn't work. Let's see here. How about we do that? Okay, that works better. All right, so here's the count. We see that we have it sorted here, and so we have six observations for person one, four observations for person two, three observations for this individual, five observations for this individual. Okay, so that's what we got. Let's come down here and click on the program. And let's uh, continue with this here. Okay, now I know that this looks like a very long 
involved program. Let's break it up and just go through it piece by piece. It's really not as bad as it's going to as it looks. We're creating a data set that's called Wide Real. We're setting it on Count Real, which we had just above. Okay. Here's the array statement. So we are going to call our array A topic A. We say that it has six elements. And so we've got topic A underscore one through topic A underscore six. Now, believe it or not, we actually made this example a little bit easier because we have it topic A because there was a topic B, C, and D, and we had to do this a whole bunch of other times. But, you know, we cut it back here. You get the point with just one of these things. But in case you're wondering, why is it topic A? Because there were other topics. We're going to retain these variables here. We have our by statement. This allows us to use uh, the first dot function here that we need and the last dot function down here that we're going to use. So if first dot person is true, so when this uh, is actually a value of 1, then do this. Okay, do I 1 through 6. So loop through the uh, six elements here. A topic A, I equals missing. So here we are the very beginning just setting everything to missing. We have an end that goes with this do, an end that goes with this do. Okay? We have some other statements here. So we have our A topic A count equals topic A. So this here is looping across the variables, um, the values in the variable count. That's what we're doing here. And here's this if last dot then output. So you see this is actually pretty similar to exactly the same thing as the reshaping before. So that's all we're doing. We're just reshaping this because we can't look down the column, but we can look across columns. But since we had a long data set, we need it out wide so that we can look across the columns to find out if we have this pattern that we're looking for. So we highlight all this and we click on the run person. And there you go. So here was the data set in its long format. Here is the data set in its wide format. Okay? And these missing show up here because remember that although person one had six observations, nobody else did. And so that's why everybody else has a missing value for this. And uh, who was it? Um, person three here only had three observations. Here's the one, two, three. So for all of these, this individual has missing values. So that's why you've got these missings in here. Okay, let's click down here on this. And now let's find people who have the same value for three observations in a row. Okay, so that's what we're doing here. We're clicking down here. So here's our data statement, our set statement, and here's the array. So we're going to do uh, an array. We're going to call it topic. It's got six elements, and those are topic A underscore one through topic A underscore six. We're doing I two through five. Well, why I two through five? Why not one to six? Well, because item one, you can't look before it. There's nothing before item one. Likewise, for item six, you can't look at the item after item six because there is no item after six. So only items two through five can you look both forward and backwards. So that's why it's two to five. Now, here we have a whole bunch of ifs and ands and stuff like that. What is this all about? If topic, and this is the array here. This here, we're seeing math in the subscripts like we saw in the beginning. This is looking back, but because we're starting at 2, so the first time through, this is 2 minus 1, which is 1, so topic underscore A underscore 1 right here is not equal to missing. And the current observation is not equal to missing, and the next one isn't equal to missing. This any is not equal to. Okay, so we're checking to make sure that none of the three are missing. Okay, so that's what we're checking for here. And we include this not to, you know, be difficult or just add one more layer of complexity, but very frequently people have to check for missing values. And so we're showing, you know, that this is how you do it, and you just 
stick it in here with a whole bunch of ands and everything will work out fine. So here's topic um, I here, so whatever the subscript is here, equals the one previous and the current one equals the next one. Then we have a variable that we call flag A is going to equal one. Finally, we get down to this end. This end corresponds to this do. If flag A equals missing, then make it zero so that we have a zero one variable going on here, a dummy variable. Okay, I know that was an awful lot. Let's go ahead and run this and see what we got. So we highlight all this, we click on our running person, and there we go. So let's have a look here. So we're looking through here and we see that there's no string of three here that were the same value and that's why flag A equals zero. We're looking through here but we see three in a row that are minus one and sure enough here we get our one. And we look through here and we go nope, 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 nothing here corresponds to three in a row so we get a value of zero here. Here we look through and we go, oh, we got three zeros in a row. And so we have a value of one here. Okay, that was um, kind of a lot. If you didn't follow that exactly, you know, that's okay. What we're trying to do here is show you some different ways in which you can use arrays to accomplish some tasks. and. You know, in the beginning when we started out, we were saying, well, you know, you don't want to do a hundred if-then statements, but can you imagine trying to do this without an array? This kind of task would <coughs> be difficult, if not impossible, to do without the use of an array. Now, the other thing to remember about arrays is you don't always know right away that you need them, so it's just one more tool in your toolkit to help you manage your data in SAS. Now, I'd like to come back to our web page here, and I'm going to scroll down quite a bit. We've seen all this stuff. I'm trying to get to the bottom here. We have some stuff here that, let's see here, right here, um, can be very useful for you in uh, giving you some more information. So we have SAS learning modules. If you want more information on the retained statement, uh, first dot, last dot, other kinds of things, I recommend going to the learning modules. It's all spelled out in much more detail than what was provided here, and I can't tell you how useful those things are. Um, so we have uh, some other pages here, using arrays to work across variables, reshaping here, using uh, data steps, here collapsing across observations, and some more uh, reshaping stuff. So if you want more information about these things, we suggest uh, these resources for you. So I hope that this has been useful. I hope that this has explained arrays so that you can go out and start trying to use them to make your SAS programming a little more simple. And thank you very much for coming.